Welcome to the 5 at 5 and finally for the first time in over a month since we beat Leeds 4-1 on the 1st of April, Arsenal have finally won a Premier League game. It's been a long old wait but I'm glad to finally do a 5 at 5 I'm looking forward to so let's get right stuck into Arsenal 3, Chelsea 1. Number 1, the quad double and that is Bukayo Saka, Martin Erdegaard, Gabriel Martinelli and Gabriel Jesus now joining them as four players within the Arsenal team that have got into double figures for league goals. Now, that is the only foursome out of any of the teams in Europe's top five leagues that have managed to do that together. Even PSG, it's only Messi, Mbappe and Neymar that have done it. They don't have a fourth. Arsenal have done something that no other team in Europe has been able to do out of the top leagues and get four players on double-digit league goals. Now, I know it doesn't mean that we win a trophy for it, but what it does show is that we don't have a single point of reliance anywhere in the team. Everyone's chipping in with goals. And just those four players combined, they've got 52 goals amongst the four of them. That's more than Chelsea, obviously, because Chelsea can barely muster up a goal anyway, but even more than Man United. So when you put it into perspective, those four alone have been doing a stellar, stellar job this season. And hopefully we see all of that come again next season and even more from other areas of the team. Brilliant, brilliant stat for Arsenal. Number two, Granite Xhaka hat-trick of assists. And yes, I know, I know, before you start getting in the comments, he probably won't get that third goal as an assist because it came off of a Chelsea player before it fell to Jesus. But I'm an Arsenal fan. And in my record books, I'm giving him the credit for all three assists because I thought he picked up pockets of space beautifully in this game. Actually, do you know what? On the ball, I felt like he could have been, he could have been a bit tidier, a bit more uh, productive in the physical battle. But off the ball, I thought he was really, really good, especially from an attacking sense. And what I found interesting was how he managed to pick up those pockets of space. And I don't know whether this was something that was specifically targeted in this game, or whether he's been trying to do it more throughout the season. On this occasion, what he did as soon as Zinchenko got the ball, he very often made an underlap shadow run ahead of him. So actually, no one sensed any danger. No player went with him because he didn't have the ball. But by the time it got played infield and then back out to him, he was free and was able to kind of eat in some yards, attacking the penalty area with no one really taking responsibility for him. Watch the goals again. Look at how he does that. He doesn't overlap, it's not obvious, he just seems to drift away from the ball as if he's not really looking for the ball in that moment, but it allows him to get goal side of the Chelsea right back and um, with their narrow defence, exploit the space on the wing. Xhaka did that to perfection, and if that was a game plan from Arteta and it worked that well, well, they both deserve a lot of credit for those two slash three assists. Well done, Granite. Number three, can we all just take a second to laugh at Chelsea. Whether you use Tottenham or Chelsea, they both get battered wherever they go. And my God, that is stuck in my head. I've been whistling it all night. Now, you have to laugh at Chelsea. They are hopeless. Aubameyang epitomised them, got hauled off at half-time, and I was loving that. But also, Frank Lampard having his name chanted from the Arsenal fans. If Frank Lampard is going to turn up at Chelsea and lose six games on the bounce, oh my God, give him a contract for life. Absolutely love seeing it. They've still only got 39 points, and you all know traditionally, People look for 40 points for Premier League safety, meaning that Chelsea still haven't even achieved that and still can mathematically be relegated. Oh my God, please just let me dream. If the title dream is over, at least let me dream about the Chelsea relegation one. Listen, they won't go down, but the fact that we can sing you're going down to them this late in the season in May is just brilliant. Love what Frank Lampard is doing at Chelsea. I love what Todd Bowley is doing at Chelsea. Keep it up. Lovely to see you back where you belong before the money. Number four, Jacob Kivior's best game for Arsenal. 
in my opinion. Now, I could focus on the lineup and talk about how Thomas Partey was dropped. I could also talk about how Rob Holding was dropped, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on the positive and focus on the fact that Kivior came in for Holding and did really, really well. Now, I've always been a little bit concerned that we went and spent £20 million on Jackie Kivior and we're still playing Rob Holding. And why is that? It feels to me like, you know, in the, in the Europa League, Kivior didn't really take his chance and do well enough. And with Arteta seeing him every single day in training, has obviously not been convinced enough by him if he continues to persist with Rob Holding. But today, after four games without a win, over a month without a win, he finally had enough and he mixed up the team and he brought Kivior in. Kivio responded with four clearances, three interceptions, and seven recoveries. He also passed the eye test, doing a really, really good job and making Aubameyang look like a spent force, which, well, hey, he kind of is. But um, Kivio did really, really well, and I'm happy for him. Hopefully, this is the game that gives him a bit of confidence in the Arsenal shirt and start to prove why we forked out that money on him. Because when we did sign him, I was looking and analysing his performances in Syria, he hadn't really torn it up or anything. So there must be something to his game. Hopefully, this performance against Chelsea was a first glimpse of what we can hopefully expect from him for many years to come. Well done, Jakob Kivio. Number five, and I wish I could talk about Arsenal making history by doing something we've not done for 19 years, and that's winning the league, but I can't. But we have made history in another way, and managed to do something that's never, ever been done before. And that is 10 London Derby victories in a single Premier League season. Arsenal have been brilliant in London derbies this season, with 10 wins, 30 points, just coming from the wins in those derbies. We've drawn a few as well. And we've done the double over Fulham. We've done it over Palace. We've done the double over Chelsea now, and also Tottenham, which, you know, always nice to do that as well. Arsenal have really, really got up for London derbies. And it's not as easy for London clubs because other teams have derbies that you have to kind of get up for and, and give that extra little bit for uh, less frequently than London teams. With so many London teams in the Premier League, Arsenal have had to have that battle many, many times over in the Premier League this season. And we've really, really responded. Well done for making history. Fingers crossed we can make a little bit more history by the end of this season but hey look you know what i'm talking about and i'm not holding my breath thank you as usual for tuning in and watching the five at five let me know your thoughts in the comments below if there's anything i've missed that you noticed and give me your predictions for the huge game against newcastle in my match review i mistakenly said man city are away at west ham they're at home they're at the etihad which probably means they're going to go and score a lot more goals and get another three points but fingers crossed they slip up. And if we win at Newcastle and Man City somehow drop points against West Ham, then who knows? The season gets really, really interesting again. Anyway, I'll see you next time after Newcastle. Hopefully Arsenal do the business. See you then.